Hi, and thanks for visiting MuseThemes.com. My name is Steve Harris. As you know, most of our team is longtime InDesign users. If you're working with Adobe Muse and you're building websites without writing code, there's a good possibility that you've spent some time in the print world before and you're looking to transition into web design. We have a lot of experience working with InDesign and working with text, but one thing that InDesign had that Muse never had was the ability for you to create multiple text columns within a frame. In InDesign, it's as simple as just right-clicking the frame or selecting the frame and choosing in the frame options the number of columns you need. You don't have that option in Muse, so we decided to build a small widget for you to be able to create these columns a little bit easier. As you can see here, I have a browser preview and we actually have a three column structure. Now I've stretched these to be full width. So as I adjust the browser size here, these columns are actually adjusting as well, but this was all made in Muse using our new widget. So let me show you how this works. It's really simple to set up. So first we'll go into Muse and if I scroll down to our toolbox number 51, we have the multi-column text boxes and let's drag that out onto the page. And as you can see, we have a nice size panel here, not too big. Now the next thing we'll do before we go into any of these options is we need a text box on the canvas. So what I'm going to do is just jump on the web here and I'll go to lorem ipsum and I've just generated about six paragraphs of text to use for this demo. So let's copy that and let's go into Muse and let's just draw a regular text box and paste that text in. Okay. Now the only thing I'm going to do is format this text to be a little bit of a better font. So let's go with Source Sans Pro Regular. And I'm just going to up the letting a little bit here. So let's up that to say 150 and space things out a bit. There you go. Okay, so now that we have a text box in place, I'm going to create a new paragraph style for that text box. So let's click on our paragraph styles panel, create a new style, and let's just call this one box, for example. And click OK. There, so we have the box style applied to this text box. Now with our multi-column text box widget, all we need to do in the flyout panel is in this first option here, we have graphic or paragraph style name, and it says box. So this is the default name we put in. You could change this to whatever you've named your text box on the page. For this example, of course, I use the same name. So let's just leave that set at box. Now, if we look through the rest of the settings here, you'll see that we have some kind of unique options for this widget. We have the column format. So if we have right now split into equal columns and what this is going to do is it's going to create the number of columns you specify and it's going to divide the text perfectly even between those three columns. If we click on the drop down, we also have the ability to wrap the text at the bottom of the frame. And what this means is if you drag your text frame down a little bit lower, so it's quite a bit longer, you could end up with the first two columns being quite full and the third column, for example, being a little bit less empty or a little bit more empty. So let's go ahead and preview this and see how it looks. I'm just going to run through the other options here. We have the number of columns. Let's leave that set at three. And now we have the gutter, which is the space between the columns in pixels. 15 is pretty tight, so I'm just going to up that to 30. And there, so let's see how this looks. So what we should get is three columns with an even number of text split between them. I'm just going to make sure that this box is sized a little bit bigger here so we have some room on the page. And I always recommend that you add a little bit of spacing below your text box here just to make sure that we've got room for this widget to work. Okay, there you go. So let's go ahead and preview this in the browser and see how it looks. There you go. So we have three columns now in place, automatic, and they are all approximately the even number of characters. So the widget is smart enough to calculate the number of characters you have and divide it up evenly. Now, if we wanted to go back into Muse and we change these settings and say, let's wrap at the bottom of the frame. And now let's drag this frame a little bit longer. And let's see how this looks in the browser. So if we preview this, there, now you can see what we're getting is we're only getting two columns. And the reason for that is because the text filled the first two columns perfectly and stopped there. So if I was to shrink this box size a little bit, which I'll do now and preview it again, let's just go ahead and shrink it to about there. What we should get now is that third column, the text will start spilling over into it. So there, you can see that now our third column has appeared and our text is spilling in. So you may have to adjust your box size a little bit. Of course, we don't unfortunately get a preview of the column structure in Muse, and this is a limitation of Muse itself, but previewing in the browser does give you a good representation. Now, the other option that we have here is for adding a divider, which is a nice feature. 
And so the column dividers just draw simple lines between each of the columns. So in this case, you do want to make sure you have a sizable gutter. So let's just leave this set at 40 pixels. Now let's enable these column dividers. And when we enable this, these settings kind of come alive so we can edit them. So our divider color, of course, this is a hex value. Let's just leave this as gray. We have the divider width in pixels. So let's do something thin. We'll say two pixels. And we have a divider style. So in this dropdown, we could do something like a dotted or dash divider. We can do a double line. Let's just set this at solid for now. And let's give this a preview and see how it looks. So now you can see that we have these nice lines between our columns. Muse automatically puts them in for us. I find this a little bit tight and I actually find the lines a little bit thick. So let's go ahead and modify those settings once again. I'm going to up the gutter size to 60 pixels. I'm going to shrink the divider size down once. Try a dotted line. Okay, let's give this a preview and see how everything looks. There. So that looks much better. It's much more subtle and the lines I think fit a little bit nicer between each of these columns. Now the only other option that you can do with this widget, and this opens up some unique possibilities as far as playing with a little bit of a more fluid or adaptive layout, is we can actually set this box to 100% width. So when you do that, you may notice that the text is kind of touching on the left and right sides, and that doesn't look very good. So within our text options here, we can just adjust the left margin. Let's set that at, say, 50, and we can adjust the right margin as well, and I'll set that to 50. So now the text box has kind of an interior margin, and our text isn't really touching the left and right side the same way. Let's go ahead and preview this in the browser. And now you can see that our text box is spread nicely across those three columns, but as I scale it down, we actually get more and more text spilling into that third column. So it's a little bit of a fluid approach to designing with these text boxes, and I think it looks and works really, really nice. We did spend a ton of time revising this widget, um, more than usual, I would say, because we wanted to get this functionality just right. So give it a shot and let us know how it works, and we're happy to make any changes or improvements if there's features that we haven't implemented. Thanks again and enjoy.